When you first enter a flood damaged home, you want to try to prioritize the work. If you have a lot of contents and things that were left behind, try to get those things out of the way first because when you start doing the deconstruction, taking down the walls, those are just going to get in the way. So that's probably the first thing. The next, if you have carpet, uh, taking out uh, water soaked carpet, again, can be done with a utility knife. Cut it up into pieces so they're not too big, not too heavy to carry. Take out uh, the water containing materials like that uh, that can contribute to the mold problem. The next thing is really looking at the different levels of the house. In this case, again, this is the water level, about five and a half feet, uh, where the water got up to on the main floor. So the basement was totally submerged, uh, and the upstairs, by and large, was okay. We did take out some of the carpet on the steps to the just above the level of the uh, water, but um, other than that, the upstairs is basically in pretty good shape. So we can talk about this in terms of a, a triage, almost like the medical term. We talk about patients in different conditions during kind of a crisis, emergency situation. That's really what we're looking at here. So our our basement is really the patient that uh, is going to be uh, in the worst shape, but there's really not a whole lot you can do immediately to help that. The priority is really, in this case, on the main floor, going and trying to get out as much of the uh, walls so that the, the studs and the uh, interior of the walls can dry out so the mold doesn't take over. The upstairs, as we talked about, is the generally healthy of the three patients. A little bit of work, but really the only thing we did was take out some of the carpet on the stairs. And uh, within that, we can prioritize even further, starting with the main floor, getting the contents out, taking the carpet out, and then looking at the rooms. The bathroom is a, is a wet environment normally anyway, so the most mold that we typically see at the beginning is in the, in the bathroom. And so we try to prioritize by going to the bathroom first. Okay? Then, if we walk over to the kitchen, here's our kitchen area through here. And that's, that, was, that was our second priority because of the wetness again in the kitchen. Okay? So getting things out of the kitchen as well. The next priority after that would be the external walls. And generally on the external walls, you can see here, and maybe back over here, this is probably the best shot here, insulation on the exterior walls. Okay? Again, this is an old house, so it's got old insulation, but that insulation sucks up the moisture and holds it against the wall and it creates an ideal environment for, for uh, mold uh, organisms to grow and to cause damage and, and also have a health concern. So that's probably the next priority is the exterior walls, getting those exposed, pulling out the insulation and trying to get things dried out. Now you can see if you look in some of the windows here, uh, we've got uh, fans propped up. And uh, once you get everything stripped out, ventilation is critical to keeping the environment dry. Okay? Now one of the things that we saw, uh, we talked a little bit about mold already, but if you look in the kitchen here, you can see here some lath that still remains going to the upstairs, this is the other side of the wall to the upstairs, and you can see the type of mold that grows uh, under these type of conditions. Again, the water line was about right here, but you can see how high the mold climbs above that water line. So it's not sufficient just to remove the wall to the water line. You have to go all the way up, probably go at least a foot above the top part where it got pulled water up through and there's no more mold. Again, ventilation is key, so we've got fans located throughout the house. Okay? This structure is fairly well open, so there's a lot of ventilation and that'll help with the, the drying out process.